<coughs> okay, hi guys. Uh, so my session will be about Raspberry Pi and the P and PHP. Uh, so quick show of hands. How many of you have actually heard of the word, heard of this thing called a Raspberry Pi? One, two, three, four. Okay, awesome. More of you. Sweet. Um, so how many of you have actually own a Raspberry Pi? One, two. Mm, not really. Okay. Right, so Raspberry Pi, for your information, looks like this. It's a, it's a credit card size um, computer. So this is how small it is. Um, so basically, what it has is a uh, two USB ports, an Ethernet port, uh, HDMI output, video output, audio output, and SD card. So you can use, uh, you can load basically load your Linux distro uh, on this SD card, and because it runs on ARM chip, it's a meg, uh, one to three megahertz uh, CPU, so it's actually fairly fast. This this model is the rest. This is um, this model is I think it's a revision revision B. Uh, so revision A has uh, doesn't has only the one USB USB port. Revision B has uh, two USB port and uh, Ethernet port. Uh, this one uh, is Raspberry Pi. So, so it's a revision B uh, release two. Release two comes with five one two megabytes of uh, of of um, RAM. Five one two uh, megabytes of RAM. So which is fairly. So it's not a work cost. It's not a number crunching work cost, but it's good enough for simple things. This was created by the the uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation uh, in the United Kingdom. So they basically wanted to use this to basically teach students in schools how to program, how to tinker around. So because this thing uh, very odd, 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 has some has has uh, GPIO pins, so you can use this to, to basically connect out to sensors, to devices, to even do things like um, measure temperature, or trigger a sensor, or turn on a switch, or turn on the light, or something like that. So, so. Um, it's actually a fairly small device and it's really low cost, about $45 to get one off, uh, off the market. The latest model comes with not two but four. The, latest, the newest model that is, is in the market now comes with four uh, USB ports. Um, so you can actually uh, use it for quite a lot of things. And it's powered by a, by a mini, mini USB uh, port at the back. So you can use your Samsung phone charger. Uh, so, I, so I think like, uh, what I have here is a simple um, five volt, two amp, uh, little little charger. So what you need to do is just plug it in, and uh, it's ready to go. Recently, uh, in the past, so it came, when it first came out, it was really hot. And people were buying it and using it to do stuff. And uh, the, the distro that you can find, that you can download, uh, the Linux distro you can download. Basically, it's a full computer running an ARM chip. So you can, run, you can actually download a full uh, Linux distribution and install it onto an SD card like this. So um, companies like Red Hat, uh, uh, Raspberry, uh, Ras or, uh, uh, Debian uh, has all come up with a, a flavor of their operating system uh, for, meant for the Raspberry Pi. Debian has, has created, uh, the community behind Debian has created a, uh, a version of, of uh, Debian called Raspbian. So it's a uh, Raspbian VZ. Uh, Fedora, the Fedora Foundation also created a, a distro called Pydora, which can be used and installed on this. So it's very, fairly, very simple. Uh, to get one of these in Singapore is also fairly easy. You can go to this website, 12gigs.com. Uh, they actually, it's actually a, a small company that basically sells at, uh, accidentally as a reseller. Uh, so that we can, you can actually buy in small quantities. You just want to buy one or two. You can get from them. You can also go down to Simplium Tower. Simplium Tower, they also sell it. Well, I think I'm sure there are two stores, there are two shops there that actually sell it. Uh, you can also, if you buy in quantity, if you buy in quantity for a company or for something, you can go straight to the local distributor. It's called Element 14. You can buy from them as well. But for the purpose of you know you guys playing around with this on your own free time, uh, I would suggest you go to trumpkings.com. They have a list of, uh, you can buy not just the Raspberry Pi, but you can also buy other peripherals. They have a starter pack which has Raspberry Pi plus SD card and USB, uh, USB hub and all that sort of things in one package so you can buy it quite, quite cheaply off your site. Um, so of course Raspberry Pi 
doesn't, you can't just use it just like that. You got to plug in peripherals, right? First, at, at least you must have an SD card, <coughs> which you can uh, install, which I'll show you later how to install the, the uh, uh, an operating system. <coughs> and then you need at least, uh, in my case, I'm actually using a, a Wi-Fi dongle so I can connect to the internet, right? You, of course, uh, the speed, this thing is only USB 2, so it's actually not very fast. So, um, but you, your if uh, and you probably you probably want to get like an internet internet cable so you connect it straight to your uh, router so you can put this right next to your router and use it um, or you can just pull a long cable from it and connect to your TV. So um, it has good thing is a HDMI output. So what you can do is you just get HDMI cable. You can plug it into your TV at home or you can use it with your. I think most monitors, some of the more uh, newer monitors nowadays come with HDMI input. So you can get a HDMI cable and plug it to your, to your, to your monitor. It's fairly, fairly, fairly good. Um, the connectors, there are a lot of, quite a lot of connectors here. So there's GPIO pins, which I've said earlier, which you can, you can plug in stuff and then do control. So there, are, there, there have been peripherals that have been created for this one. It's called a Pi Face. Pi Face is uh, basically, it's like an add-on add board. You can just take this board and plug it on top and you can turn it into, uh, can, there are switches here. There are relays you can use to turn on and off a light switch or something, which is very powerful. Uh, they also came out with a Pi, Pi camera, so you can basically take this and you can basically plug in a small little, small little camera. Okay, plug it right into the onto the board, and you can use that as as a, as a say webcam, which you can use. For example, you can use this to set up. A spy cam at home or something, you know. So, or a nanny cam, for example, if you have if you have kids or something, so you can use it as a nanny cam. Um, fairly simple. Uh, for, but for today, I won't be I won't be touching on those. But I'll just be going uh, basically into this. So, um, once you have all your peripherals, you got a USB keyboard. You can also use it with a mouse because the usually most of the distros that you can you have also can boot into X Windows, which is like a GUI, so you can use your mouse and do some stuff on it. But don't expect blazing speed, okay, it's just basic. Um, one of the distros you can use is actually called RAS, RAS BMC. So basically it's a, it's a port of the XBMC, Xbox Media Center, meant for the Raspberry Pi. So basically those guys have basically ported it here, actually one kit, or well, actually a few of them. But the RAS, RAS BMC is, a, is the easiest to install. Basically with that you can you plug it in, um, you basically become a media center. So you can use this to play uh, high dev videos on your uh, we've used this at, at the hacker space to so basically play videos on, on our projector screen, which is kind of cool. So basically this one links to a, a, a network drive and from yeah. network drive, you mount the, net, mount the network drive and then I, I can pick up yeah. files or AVI files or, or, or MOV files and just play it off this. It's fairly cool. Um, right, so um, getting the distro is also very simple. You just go to the, web, go to the Raspberry Pi website there's a download section. You can, there are options available where you can down, you can install directly straight into the Pi. Uh, so get a bigger picture of how it looks like. From top view, this is uh, this is the Ethernet port, USB. Uh, maybe later you can come and have a closer look if you haven't seen before. Uh, Right, the installing it is also very, very simple. So you can install using the loop. They call it the loop. It basically stands for, um, I, can't remember, I can't remember what it stands for. <laughs> uh, noob, it stands for, I think it's uh, new out of the box software. Right, so it's not new out of the noob software. Yeah. So uh, the new out of the box software is a, is a 1.4 gigabyte download. But in it, there is an off there is an offline install. Basically, it's an offline installation of the distro distros that you need, right? Uh, so with this, you basically plug this in, uh, or rather download it, uh, format your SD card, drag the files that are inside the zip file into uh, into this SD card, and plug it in to the power and all that, and it will basically go through the process of installing the operating system for you. Of course, if you feel a bit more adventurous, you can <coughs> go and download the image, the OS image on your own. Just get the get the ISO file or the or the I think it's a it's probably ISO file. So basically, there are instructions. You can basically go through the command line 
if you're on a Mac or on the Linux machine, you can use DD, which is a uh, which basically image copies the image to the SD card. Um, you can also uh, the Xbox Media Center. There's a couple of variants of the Xbox Media Center for Raspberry Pi. There's Open Elect. Uh, there's also Res Res VMC, which is one of my favorite. Risk OS, uh, Arch Linux. If you're if you're into a bit some of the bleeding edge technologies in Linux, you can try Arch Linux on this as well. Um, right. So, so basically, what you do is you need to do is, is download this. It's a zip file. So download this. Format a format SD card and basically copy the contents of the zip file into the SD card. It's that simple, right? Once you do, they connect up all the peripherals. So I'll try now with a with a card which I just download with something I just downloaded. So basically, let me see if I can show you. So this is an SD card which I have just copied the contents into. So there's a whole bunch of stuff here. You don't have to worry about what they all what they all mean, but basically this is, the, this is a new installer. So I'll plug this out. Let's see. Uh, okay. So let me out. This is a live demonstration. Things will definitely go wrong. Uh, yeah. So make sure all this stuff plugged in and this SD card you will uh, boot up to. Let's try this. Hopefully it works. So this one is a fresh uh, boot up of of uh, of the new out of the box software. So it's a new software. So basically, it's the way startup is have something like this. So you can from this, you can select the operating system you want. Right. So I'm going to install Raspberry Easy. So um, at this point, you might want to have a mouse, but you, you it's basically everything is keyboard easy. So basically, if you see at the bottom. One important thing about installing uh, this is that make sure you set the keyboard and the language up properly. Because by default, it's because this is created in Great Britain, so the keyboard alignment is actually the GB alignment. So if you want to change in US, because most of the keyboards that we have in Singapore are US based. So you press number nine, you need to pick up the US keyboard thing somewhere at the bottom. Sorry, it's below the phone, you probably can't see it. Uh, language um, and we're ready. Just press I, and you basically go through the whole installation for you, right? Because I've selected, I've selected this. It will basically take this and install because it is a offline installation. Uh, so I don't need internet connection for this, which is why the inst the download file is about one point four gigabytes, right? So once you have it, it doesn't need, it doesn't require internet connection. You just install Raspberry Wheezy. I think the rest should also be an, off an offline install as well, which is fairly awesome. That means you don't need. You don't need to have internet connection immediately to get this thing done. Um, I wouldn't go through this process because it's, it's going to take about um, 15 minutes or so. Go through this. I already have a card which is already pre-formatted with everything. Uh, so I will turn this off. So one thing, good thing about this card kind of device is that you don't have to, there's no off switch. There is no button on, on off switch on this machine, on this little card. So the power is basically you turn off the Turn off the power there, right? So, so this right now it's a. I'm recording. I'm recording a screen, which is why I'm, I'm, I'm. I have to press that button there. So, um, right. The boot up is fairly simple. So it's a boot up into. Uh, I'm running. Right now I'm running this in headless mode. The headless mode means it basically I don't need the full uh, Windows experience. Uh, yeah, so you will start up with a uh, in Linux basically you load a Linux console. So you you want to use this, you might have to learn a little bit of uh, Linux commands, right? Um, just a little bit, not too much. Uh, I'll, I'll show you another slide later. So when you lock, that lock when you start it up, when it's ready to go, you look. If you can see at the bottom, there is a login screen. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, it's below the fold again. I'll try to I'll try to switch over and show you this on my laptop a bit later. So basically, with this, you just have to log in with uh, the <coughs> default the default username and password is very, is just uh, username is pi. Oops. Why is the keyboard not working? Oh yeah. Start responding. I'll, I'll try again. <coughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. <coughs> okay, uh, let me try that again. Oh. Ne negative demonstration, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so plug this in, it starts up, it should bring me to Windows. Oh, what did I say, Windows? No, it brings me to Linux. Uh, yeah. So I'm booting up and I'm also starting the uh, Wi-Fi dongle at the same time. This thing is not working. Okay. Never mind. But you roughly get what. what so basically, what, once you have it started up, <coughs> right. So once you have it started up, you all you need to do next is to install. The, the necessary software. So, first thing you want to do is after you boot up, is run this command. So the first time it boots up, it basically will run this command, and you it's basically a configuration utility. This is screen based. So you basically go through it, and you can reconfigure your access your keyboard and locale settings. So you can also open up SSH access to this to this little Raspberry Pi, right? Um, one other thing you want to do is to do an amplitude update. Aptitude is a, a, a package manager for, for, for Ubuntu and the Debian and for Raspberry Pi as well. So basically it's a package manager which helps you install the, the software that's required to run it. So Aptitude is a package manager that helps you, basically it's like a, hand, it's like a centralized repository where, where all this open source software is collected together. So you can use this to basically install PHP, at, uh, Apache and Nginx or whatever, right? But because this is a very low power machine, you might not want to overload it with too many things. So basically, you, first of all, you, uh, you want to make sure that all the packages that are inside here are updated. So you do a sudo aptitude update, you should update all the software that's already pre-installed inside. The next thing I want to do is install Apache and PHP. So basically, you just do a sudo app get install. Uh, so sudo is, it means telling the system that I'm acting as the super user, as a, as a root user, right? So you're logged in as Pi, the user Pi, uh, but the Pi user has sudo rights. So you basically type sudo, which gives you root, ac root access. <coughs> app get is the shortcut to amplitude. So app get install will basically help you install new packages, new software like PHP and Apache, right? So in this case, I'm installing two software, Apache 2 and PHP 5. We should basically install for you PHP 5.4. So once you key this in, you will run through and install the whole thing for you. Uh, <coughs> but of course, make sure you run this update first. Because sometimes there are updated packages that are available on the, on the, on the repository. You might want to run that to make sure you get the latest version. This is a, a 
once you have PHP installed and Apache installed, you can do the basic things you can you can on any machine or on, on any web server that you have. You can go to you go you go into the the document root, upload. Uh, you can SCP or upload files into it. Uh, then you can write stuff and do cool stuff. Um, what we have done, what I have done, is uh, we have put together in, in hackerspace. I put together a little um, project, which which we are using right now for our security surveillance and our door access. So basically, what this does, what what you see here is a Raspberry Pi. It has on top of it a, a little expansion board called Raspy Juice. Uh, it's basically running Debian, uh, the, the Raspbian VZ. Uh, it's running an Apache web server. It's also running PHP inside. And what it does is that um, the PHP uh, can talk, will talk to the to this Raspy Juice through a command line. So it basically uh, run the command I square C something. And it basically calls a command and it should trigger something on the recipe juice. Right. So what happens is is and that this recipe juice itself is connected to a camera or rather a servo. Two servos. Basically gives it a kind of pan and tilt capabilities. Right? And on top and on this there is a USB camera which I plug into the the Pi itself. Okay? So once I have so I use PHP to basically trigger the recipe juice to basically pan and tilt. And at the same time, it will also capture the image using another software. So PHP is kind of like the interface layer which will help you see the image uh, and you can talk to the different parts of the hardware. So the good thing about internet or about the Raspberry Pi like this or the whole concept of internet of things is the ability to use software to talk to certain hardware and then get the hardware give you a feedback. So in this case, I'm talking to, uh, I'm using Raspberry Pi to talk to an expansion board. An expansion board talks to two motors, servo motors, which will basically turn it and tilt it. So the image is actually captured using a USB camera. <coughs> so it uses a USB connection. Um, and I'm using a software called MJPEG Streamer. The MJPEG Streamer runs as a daemon in the background, so it's a software you can install. And basically, you will basically listen. Uh, you basically detect any camera, and and let you and provide a web service where you can see the images. Uh, at the same time, I've also connected that RAS, Raspberry Pi uh, to over the internet. Basically, there was uh, I have Ethernet cable that goes from uh, the Ethernet cable basically connects to the internet, uh, or rather to the network at, at hackerspace. And inside the network somewhere, there's another. There's a Arduino, Arduino which has a uh, eventually it's, it, it comes with an Ethernet port as well. The Arduino comes with an Ethernet port and has IP address. So what I've done is I rigged it up to a sensor, as an infrared sensor. So basically you can cross it. You click. You basically you will cross it. You will basically tell me that oh someone is at the door, All right? Um, so what I've done here is I've set up a sensor, and this sensor basically. Uh, triggers a relay and which will unlock the door at hackerspace. Uh, the man magnetic door rather will actually unlock the magnetic door at hackerspace. And I will because I've connected to the, the internet, I can use the Raspberry Pi to tell this guy to open the door. Right? So which is what I actually have done. And this is how it, the final product pretty much looks like. So it has internet this is the Arduino with, with uh, an internet port. And this guy basically talks to the Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi tells it, please unlock the door, and it will basically unlock the door. Um, and to get all these, tie all this together, I've actually written a PHP app, a web app, which basically does nothing more than triggers that open door mechanism. Right? So basically, when I go to this page, I click open, you basically make a web call internally to the Arduino, and the Arduino will basically open the door. Right. Um, how it basically kind of works is this like on on uh, internet I have AWS web uh, web server running Apache. So if I go to like some it goes through this and talks through the network to the Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi will basically talk to the Arduino, which will then open the door. So kind of that's kind of how it works. 
Uh, we have this, I have the source code for this part of the equation on the internet, so you can go to GitHub. Huh? Yeah? This is, is a fake URL, don't worry. <laughs> uh, I can show you images of it now. Um, so this is the current incarnation of the DAW system. So basically, when I type in my pin code, I can remotely unlock the DAW at Hackerspace. Um, and this is pretty much, the, there are two webcams uh, built here. Uh, the two webcams right now are Hackerspace, and this is the one that is facing away. But the one that, you're, that, that is being used for us is this guy. So this is the webcam that I have uh, mounted. The, the picture you see earlier, this is the feed, like live feed coming from uh, that webcam. I can just refresh this to show you that. So this is actually basically running off a, uh, a web. Uh, it's a web application running off a PHP application running off the Raspberry Pi, um, and I can then make it tilt, make it pan. I'm not. Sure. I press it a few times so it goes a few times. I can see the people that are there right now. So, yeah. So very simple technology uh, they they put together. I can even do a live stream. Uh, look, his leg moves. Okay, fine. <laughs> Is that Gibson? Yes, that's Gibson. Right, so yeah, so this is a, a live stream uh, of of the uh, hackerspace right now. Right, so the the dog, the codes for the dog can be found at, at my on my repo, so you can go to uh, github.com slash Matching HSG door, so you can find the sample of, of the how the code looks like. Um, <coughs> yeah, it's actually fairly simple. Let me try. It. I don't know if I can show you the code itself. So it's uh, right. So the index file is this very simple index file, which has all the buttons. So all these buttons are basically calling. All these buttons will basically trigger a uh, an AJAX call through JavaScript. So basically, it would it would trigger open, and this what this will do is will it will call a it will call somewhere post to off dot php. Basically, you got you gather the pin number six numbers and all, and then once you get six numbers. You trigger the post, the AJAX post, to to the to the PHP server. So off the PHP will receive it, right? It would it will do a prop. It will filter the input to make sure that uh, this is a very a valid uh, request. Uh, you do a verification to check the pin based on. Uh, we have a JSON file that kind of cr creates a. MD5 hash, the MD5 hash of the pin. So we compare the, the MD5 hash of and the, and the new pin coming in, and we compare it. If, if there's a matching uh, MD5 hash, we will know that this is a, a proper user. Uh, once we have that, uh, <coughs> once this guy receives a proper response, it should trigger a function called open door. Open door, I think, should be found inside funks. Open door. And this will basically trigger a URL somewhere. Okay. This guy should trigger a URL somewhere. Yeah, it will trigger. Okay. Can shell script? Shell script. Currently, it triggers a shell script where? No, oh! No, Okay, fine. You open, you triggers open. So I assume this is in the. Oh, is that is in in the, 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 the this is actually, okay in yeah okay the Raspberry Pi. 
This is where the ransomware pie is. I'm sorry. The ransomware pie will receive this. It will trigger open door.sh. Open door.sh should be inside here, if I'm not wrong. Right. Uh, it will trigger a curl script. Okay, we have, uh, we are using, I'm using this uh, port, uh, SSH tunneling service called Pi dot the base. It's actually created by a local by a local guy. Um, it's called uh, the base pi dot the base dot com. Uh, let me try and find it. Where is it? Yeah, there you go. So you can do free asset uh, uh, SG base. I port forwarding basically forwards the request from one um, from outside to internally inside your network. So this one basically triggers a curl command to to my to the server that's inside that's sitting inside the hackerspace so basically you make a curl request to the server inside hackerspace and you will say please open the door and you will show the door what is it called mm -hmm. let me try and remember <coughs> open the door okay yeah so it basically calls to this URL with this Door Arduino is basically make, making a call to the Arduino itself. It's, op it's triggering the open dot, open dot JSON, which is a uh, JSON, which is so basically there's a, also inside the Arduino there's also a web server. I written a, a mini web server that runs inside Arduino, so the Arduino itself acts as a web server that would listen to calls like this, and I also added a basic authentication on the web server. So basically it would ask for password right so that's in a nutshell how the whole thing is put together uh, quite a lot of moving parts I, I am sure and I'm, I'm sorry I didn't have time to go through in detail all these things but um, but but just know this uh, you with the Raspberry Pi it's a very easy way to uh, try <coughs> using PHP on a very low level and once you and then you can connect all the pieces and all the different parts together in very easy, easy kind of fairly easy way. So again, this is how it looks like. Um, in res recipe juice is actually uh, manufactured by a local uh, local guy, a guy in Singapore. His name is Adnan. So he creates this um, uh, out, of, out of hobby, out of passion. He's a quite a, quite a, quite a veteran electronics geek in Singapore. He's actually involved. Was he was formerly involved with the with Pirate 3D. Uh, the first run of the Pirate 3D Buccaneer 3D printer was actually using a Raspberry Pi inside. So <coughs> this little bugger here can actually power quite a lot of things. Um, yeah. So uh, you you can get this from a website called Twelve Geeks, which has all the stuff. Quite a few things you can get. Um, so you can also get a um, quite a lot of things from them. Yeah, there's also a touch screen you can actually buy. You can just purchase and just use this as a touch screen. So this is kind of cool. Um, yeah, that's how it looks like. Um, so you can use this to do a lot of things. Uh, it's actually up to your imagination. And quite uh, you can do a lot of things without even touching a soldering iron. Right? It's, it's just fairly very uh, cool. When I first started playing around with uh, electronics like this, I was, it was a bit uh, scary because I was thinking, oh shit, do I have to actually touch a soldering iron because I've never soldered in my whole life. So, um, but I like the ability to, I, 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 what appealed to me was the ability to turn code and, and use a, uh, a programming code to effect something in the physical world. Right, you basically have a, you write some code, and you can use a web service to basically trigger something in the physical world. To me, that was a very appealing proposition that you can do. That you basically your horizon of that you, where your software can go uh, expands immensely. Right. So, with this little thing, you can also. You, yeah, I mean, if you will look at the online community right now. There's a lot of things that are being done. Um, you can. Uh, with the GPIO pins, you can basically uh, plug in and you can, if you, if you are into soldering and you like to look at some electronics and how to put it all together, you can do a lot more of this. And the GPIO pins can be used to control sensors, 
to take uh, temperature reading. There's a project going on right now where uh, a, a friend of mine, his name is Roland, is putting together a bunch of these Raspberry Pis, collecting a bunch of this, maybe, not, okay, not a Pi, but another chip. So basically, he's using software to collect sensor readings on uh, temp, uh, air quality. He's basically putting together a project where he has, it was, it's not a Raspberry Pi, but it's some other device which has a, which also has internet capabilities. It's another board, another small, uh, simple board with a with, with a sensor, uh, uh, air quality sensor, and an internet and internet connection. With that, he was able to basically broadcast, uh, collect air samples, air quality samples, and, and aggregate all of them uh, from different parts of the island. Which is actually one small little project, which is I think has very good impact, uh, as in we can know quickly. The air quality. You thought it's the grassroots movement about how we can measure uh, air quality. I can't remember the website where you post this up on, but uh, if I find it, I'll, I'll share it on, on the Facebook group. So um, you can. So basically, the good thing is that this thing you can is a full Linux box. You can write uh, PHP applications on this. You can write PHP web applications on this, and you can use the web applications to touch physical devices touch physical, take physical readings of sensors and all that sort of stuff. So this is basically a red use, you can use PHP code to trigger something in the physical world. Um, I hope in maybe in the next meetup, I'll, once I put together a bit more of these things, I hope to actually show you some more uh, physical projects you can, you can try to explore using PHP and the Raspberry Pi. Um, I think this is the next frontier. <laughs> The next area which you can go to, just imagine the, the capabilities, imagine the possibilities you can do with this. Interactive, think about maybe an interactive kiosk. With this connected to a webcam, uh, and then it also has an input device, and has a, pro has a projection screen that can come out from HDMI. Right? So you can do all sorts of funny things. With it. And imagine you have a web, and it has an internet connection. So you can create like web services to talk to this thing. It's, it's, it's a, it'll be phenomenal. Phenomenal. Just imagine the possibilities. And because it runs a uh, PHP, you can use it as a simple, you can interface with it very easily. Not like in the past where you have to write very obscure binary pro uh, communications to can connect through the wire to this thing, but you can use TCP IP, talk to it through HTTP, right? Which is, you can even install Wrestler. <laughs> you can even install Wrestler as a REST API, the REST API can talk to, which is Basically, what I was doing with, I was trying to masquerade this as a JSON API. So yeah, so basically, I have a web interface that talks <coughs> to this guy, uh, to off.php, which is basically as masquerading as a REST API. And behind it, it does stuff in the physical world. Right? It either talks to the web service, it talks, or it talks to the physical, the door locking mechanism and stuff. So yeah, so it can. There are many possibilities and. Um, it's not very powerful, but it's good enough for quite a few things. Um, I hope you guys will try it out soon. Um, right, so, yes. Have you tried using that one to replace EC2 micro instant? Uh, the guys who run the Raspberry Jam in Singapore, uh, his name is Daniel. He is running the Raspberry Jam website using a Raspberry Pi right now. He's running a WordPress. He's basically running WordPress on this. Um, yeah, he's running Apache at WordPress, and I think he's using SQLite. If I'm not wrong, he's using SQLite as a backend database for this, so it can be done. And he's serving it from his home, basically using NAT to kind of route the thing. So I can't remember what's the website you are working on. Okay, this is not right. Oh, okay. Mm. That's very <laughs> Sorry. Well, the, the meetups, the meetup group, uh, when they meet up, uh, it's called a Raspberry Jam. So they're like the guys who are Raspberry enthusiasts come together. It's, it's called Raspberry Jam. Um, I wonder whether he has the website URL here. Uh, my 
don't have to go out here. Yeah, so I think there's a URL here. I'll find it somehow and then share, I'll share the link as well. Um, so there is a community of Raspberry Pi users in Singapore. They have a Facebook group, of which I'm a member of, and uh, you can, um, yeah, so you can check, check them out. Raspberry uh, Pi company page. Uh, there is also I have put together a, some articles as well. Uh, right. So I put together a Raspberry Pi FAQ, um, uh, which will give you ideas about what where to get all the stuff that you need for this. Um, right. Yes. So how do you get PHP to interface with the hardware network? Okay, so there are many ways you can try this. Uh, uh, the easiest is to actually try and talk to talk to the GPIO pins directly. So each each pin in Linux, each of this physical pin is actually tied to a file. Oh, okay. Inside slash dev slash something. So there's actually a, uh, a, a pin number, and it's basically writing. Uh, you basically write to it. To a file. Write to a file. Basically, you pipe or you know, write greater than you pipe. Or, mm -hmm. you pipe a, with zero or one to a file. Um, I believe there are some libraries out there that help you do this more easily. Um, I'll let me try and find some stuff online and pass it to you. So you don't have to do C or SMB. You don't have to do C or SMB. You can use <coughs> you can use Python also. Python also has a library that can helps you talk to these other. Is it also through the files? Is it basically interfaces to the files direct for you? Um, there was a project, I think there was a PHP specific project just for this, uh, but let me try and find it again. There is a PHP GPIO. Yeah, PHP GPIO, yeah, there's oh. the project for that. So basically you can talk to GPIO pins here directly. If you're using a, a device like PyFace, uh, which is an expansion board, we're we'll using uh, what we have, maybe you can try and log into the server and show you. So inside the server, I can now, I can try and log into the Raspberry Pi in the hackerspace right now. I hope I can do this. Ah, I mean, sweet. So I'm logged into the Raspberry Pi in hackerspace. Um, right. So if I let me go to the bar, triple W. Uh, cam controls. So uh, cam position. Right. Um, if I'm not wrong, this thing is basically just calling. It's running a command to. Set pan, set tilt, set pan, set tilt, set server position. Okay, it's basically running a command called I square I square C set. So, um, I believe it's a built-in command in Raspberry Raspberry Rasp 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 Easy. Yeah, so you can use this to uh, I square C set. So the I square C is actually a protocol, a protocol used to talk to communicate with the GPIO pins. So in this case, 
I have to be root to run this. Yeah, so I have to be root to run this. So basically, you pass in a few parameters. Uh, I square C set dash Y and followed by the servo control I'm, I'm, co I'm connecting to and the XY coordinate and stuff. So W, which writes the command. I have honestly no idea what this means. <laughs> I was told this is what, what I should use. And uh, the guy who helped me put put together the the physical the physical part of this, the creator of, of the recipe juice told me to use this command. So basically I square C is basically a built-in command which you can be used to communicate with the Pi and with the two with the two servos that are specified there. Um, yeah. Yeah. How much power can you transmit to the server? This thing? Yeah. Uh, 5 volts, I think up to 2 amp. Yeah. 2 amp and above, I think I've tried with, I've tried with, uh, but 5 volts basically. And the input power for this magic was micro USB? Yes, it's micro USB. Can it transmit data through that? No, the date, uh, there's only power. On the on the one side is a US is a micro USB is power in. Data is only through the two USB ports and uh, of course the Ethernet port. Do you think it's possible to swap other resolder the I don't think so. I think it's specifically plug I think there is also I I I think I think it's this this port is probably soldered just for power. Mm. I don't think it's used for meant for Man for data. Yeah. Of course, there are other GPIO pins you can maybe try and do that as well. Yeah. Um, right. So that's the Raspberry Pi. Uh, yes. That's the. Open up the connect to the arch. Yeah. Can you connect these directly to the open door? Why do you have to go through the uh, Sorry. Why is the need of having Yes, uh, the door can be connected directly to the GPIO pins. At that point in time, when I built, when I first, the first iteration of this at the old, at the old hacker space, do you remember the old hacker space? It was a staircase going down. So the Arduino uh, was at the bottom of the staircase uh, where we can, I can place the sensor and it can then talk to the door lock. So it's closer to the door lock system. Whereas the Raspberry Pi was actually further up the staircase, at the top of the staircase where the camera, I mounted the camera on. So the unlock mechanism is available for Raspberry Pi? The unlock mechanism was, okay, the unlocking mechanism for the door at Hackerspace is basically touching two wires together. <laughs> when I touch two wires, the, the, the electronic, the door, the door pin will basically unlock. Yeah, so it's as simple as touching those two so wires. So we, we don't really need that. You, you, because right now, physically, <coughs> Uh, physically, the camera is closer to the door, and theoretically, the next the next iteration was I could remove the Arduino altogether and use this to as use this for the infrared sensor plus the the unlock mechanism. Who is external sensor? I have no idea. It's quite a lot of pins here. So every pin represent one. Uh, pin can be output or input. You can, you can com configure it. There are some pins of, that are for meant for power, there are some pins that are meant for data. Uh, this thing only has digital inputs and output. Uh, so you can't measure things like voltage differences and everything. So for that you need a uh, digital to analog uh, converter. Or analog digital. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Um, yeah. Anything beyond this is actually beyond my expertise of uh, you know uh, my, my entry level I, I understand of electronics right so um, but if you do if you can and do know a bit more about the electronics part of it this is a this is actually a very easy way to uh, get started um, like in the past when you need to build like stuff that needs to move and trigger stuff you need to basically build your own boards you need to build your own uh, electronic put, put together all electronic components and create all micro microcontrollers. Uh, nowadays, with open source te uh, technologies like you know an Arduino and now the Raspberry Pi, it's actually a lot easier to create um, 
those things uh, and easier to ramp, it's easier to build uh, web interfaces that could talk to these things as well. So, yeah. Mm, any other questions? Have you, have you break the Raspberry Pi before? Have I broken a Raspberry Pi before? Yeah. Uh, not yet. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I can probably blow it if I send too much power to it. Yeah. If I'm not wrong, uh, I think this thing can only take 3.3 .3 volts uh, internally, if I'm not wrong. The, the GPIO pin is uh, the one that's setting up power, can only take 3.3 .3 volts. And so basically, your, your, in anything, any, any digital signal or electrical signal setting in can't be higher than 3.3 .3 because otherwise you'll kill, you'll kill the board. I like the Raspberry, I like, I like the Arduino which is 5 volt. Uh, it sends out 5 volt and turn. Yeah. So we need to step down a lot. Just yeah. to get this you do have to step down a lot. And this one doesn't have a surge protector, yeah. so you basically blow, you send too much power, you will, you will blow. <laughs> uh, uh, the Arduino is, is a bit more robust, it's, and it, can, it sends out 5 volts and it has a surge protector, so it will not blow up if you send too much power to it. Um, uh, and so if you plug in devices to this, you gotta make sure that those devices can be powered by the powers rating this thing. So this guy is only sending out 3.3 volts and so any peripherals or, or stuff you're plugging into the pins, uh, it, it needs to know that it can be powered, we need to know that it can be powered by 3.3 volt power coming out of this. Uh, whereas this guy is setting out 5 volts. So if you buy electronics that are meant for the Arduino, uh, chances are they, they, they won't work properly on this unless you do some to figure out how to step the power up a little bit, so or step it down, so rather. Yes. So this is basically a mini computer. It is a mini computer. Uh, yes. And then Arduino is exactly what. It's a microcontroller. Yeah. So it has a bunch of input outputs, and it can you can program a very simple program on it. Uh, you you write in a program called Scratch. I think it's Scratch or I can't remember what it's called. It's a C like program, so you can. You can write stuff on it. I believe I have a the sample code for this Arduino project is actually also on my on my uh, GitHub, so you can actually go and check it out. Um, yeah, I'll try and put as much links as I can on together with these slides uh, when I publish it on Speaker Deck. You can find my slides on speakerdeck.com. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Any any questions in general about the, about PHP or and about uh, our music group? Do you guys know any? No. Okay. Anyway, you know where to contact me. I'm on Facebook. You can contact me on. Or you just post a question if you have any on the Facebook group. We'll be glad to help you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kim Sia here is kind of like my co-conspirator. I'm going to try to hand off as much of my no, responsibility no. and knowledge to him. Um, professionally, I'm moving uh, on to um, learning more Ruby. Um, so, my, as my day job, I have to do more Ruby. So, I, uh, I don't have much time left to do <laughs> in the week to do PHP. So, yeah. So, I hope that we could also have more people step up from you guys and share about your PHP knowledge, about your what you're doing uh, in your projects or something like that. So, yeah. Um, that's it. All right. Um, how was the food? Was it good? Was it good? Was it? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Sweet. Thank you very much. Uh, that's all I have. Um, and thanks again, Dora, for, for hosting us. Uh, I need to help.